Speak to our correspondent, Yena Li. Hello to you, uh, Yena. So troublemaker, one way that Beijing has characterized him. What else have you heard about uh, Lai Qingde from uh, China's uh, leadership? Chinese authorities and Chinese state media have in turn described Lai Qingde as a die-hard secessionist, a separatist and a severe danger. He's viewed as being even more anti-Beijing than Tsai Ing-wen. China just won't let go of that statement he made back in 2017 when he described himself as a pragmatic worker for Taiwan independence. Statements that he has since clarified and toned down. But the fact of the, ma the, fact of the matter is Beijing despises the party he works for, the DPP and the direction this party has been taking. The progressives have been leaning into Taiwan's changing society, focusing on rights issues and presenting new political narratives about what it means to be a Taiwanese, discussing a Taiwanese identity that is separate to that of China. That's what particularly irks a Beijing. For authorities here, Taiwan is an integral part of its territory. These elections and their outcomes are for them internal matters, domestic affairs. Ahead of the elections, in fact, they framed this vote as a choice between war and peace, insinuating then that choosing lie is a provocation for them. So we can definitely expect some heightened tensions ahead of Lai's inauguration in May, even if U.S.-China relations have improved. You know, while you were speaking, um, we got a on the wires, Lai Ching just saying, we hope that China will understand that only peace benefits uh, both sides. I'm guessing that's a bit optimistic. Where do you think this will leave um, cross-strait ties? Well, it's going to be very rocky. Uh, well, we can expect uh, more of the same as what we've been seeing in uh, recent years, and perhaps worse if uh, Beijing increases its military uh, pressure in the region, as it has been doing. I don't expect any sort of communication to be re-established between the D DPP and uh, Beijing, as Lai ching much like his predecessor, outgoing Tsai Ing-wen, refuses to agree to the 1992 consensus. Now, this is the idea that there is only one China, with each side opting to agree to disagree on which China they're actually talking about. But for Lai, uh, Taiwan is already an independent and sovereign nation. So there's no need to officially declare independence. And there's also no need to pretend that there's only one a China. And remember, this was a continuity ticket. Lai was size a vice president. Much of her trademark policies on cross-strait issues will likely to continue, such as Taipei's efforts to increase cooperation with Southeast Asia, South Asia, Australia, New Zealand, as well as focus focusing on developing the archipelago's military defences. Another key person to look out for is the VP-elect, uh, Taiwan's former envoy to Washington, who's likely to use her contacts and experience to try and boost Taiwan's presence on the international stage. However, the DPP's policies might not always uh, go through, though it all does depend on if they manage to win a comfortable majority in the legislative UN uh, or not, or if not, they'll be forced to compromise with uh, other parties on these issues. All right, Yana, thank you very much. Yana Lee reporting from Beijing.